Hello, and welcome to Apex Math. Today we are going to look at how to solve square root equations. This would normally be covered in an Algebra 2 or a Common Core 2 math class. All right, so the first one we're going to look at is if we have the square root of x minus 1 equals 3. So if you have a square root over your x. Remember, you're trying to get to an x and it's under a square root. So you need to do the inverse operation. You'll hear me talk about inverse operations all the time. The inverse of a square root is to square. So we are going to, in order to be able to get this x out from underneath this square root, we're going to have to square both sides. So we're going to square this side so that we can get him out from underneath that square root. And because we, whatever we do to one side of an equation in order to keep it equal, we have to do it to the other side. So we're going to square that as well. Now, when you square a square root, because they're inverse operations, they undo each other which means that I can just take out what is underneath here, x minus 1, and now I have x minus 1 equals 9. And now I solve for x plus 1 plus 1, x is equal to 10. And if you plug it back in here, you can see that if I do 10 minus 1, that's equal to the square root of 9, which gives me three, which is the answer that I was looking for. All right, so let's do another one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's look at the square root of 2x minus 6 equals the square root of 3x minus 14. So in this case, I've got x on both sides of the equation, and the x is still underneath the square root. So I know I'm going to have to square in order to get to the x out from underneath the square root. So I'm going to square both sides. And if I square this, again, the square undoes the square root. So I'm left with 2x minus 6. And it does the same thing on this side because there's a square root over here. So I'm left with 3x minus 14. And then this becomes a rather easy equation to solve. I subtract 2x from both sides and add 14 to both sides. I get x is equal to 8. And I am done. All right, let's look at the next one. Let's say we have 20 minus x to the 1 half is equal to x. Now, this one's a little bit different. There's a couple things that are different. One thing that's different is we have a one-half here. We're not seeing a square root sign. And the other thing that's different is this x is under that one-half, and this x is over here on this side of the equation, and it is not under any type of uh, power or square root. So the first thing to note is that a one-half power is the same thing as a square root. So this is essentially saying 20 minus x the square root. That's what that means when you say that is to the one-half power. Now, anytime you have a equation where one of your x's is under a square root and the other one is not, you want one to be on the left-hand side and the other one that's not to be on the right-hand side. So we're already set up for that. And we want to go ahead now and use the inverse operation and square both sides. 
So if I square this, it will take away my square root. So I end up with 20 minus x. And then on this side, I get an x squared. So let's erase what we have here. And now let's talk about how we solve this. For a lot of students, getting to this step, then they don't know what to do to solve this. Well, you should immediately recognize that there's three different types of equations you've learned to solve. You've learned to solve linear equations. Linear equations is when x is to the first power. You've learned to solve quadratic equations, where x is to the second power. And you've learned to solve exponential equations, where the variable is up in the exponent position. And how you solve each of these e types of equations is different. In linear, we isolate the x. In quadratic, that's where we have to remember that we have to set it equal to 0. And then we have to factor, complete the square, or use the quadratic formula. So it's not as easy to solve when we have an x squared as it is when we have a linear. And then exponential, we have two videos on how to do that. We have to use logs or the um, get things to the same base. In this case, we can see here that we have an x squared. So that tells me the type of equation I have ended up with here is a quadratic equation. And quadratic equations are always set equal to 0. So I'm going to have x squared. I want my x squared to always be positive. So it's currently positive, which means I want to take these guys and move them to that side of the equation to set it equal to 0. Because if I move the x squared over, I'll make my x squared negative, And I don't want that. So I'm going to add x to bring him over to that side. So I get a plus x. And then I'm going to subtract 20 to bring him over, minus 20. And then I cleared everything on this side, which means I'm left with just 0. So now I have set up the equation to be solved like a quadratic equation. So I have a couple different options here. I can use the quadratic formula, I can factor, or I can complete the square. Usually we try to factor first. So in order to factor, we're going to check to see if the leading coefficient is 1. And it is, which means we get to do simple factoring, which is nice. And so we're going to take the constant here, negative 20. And we're going to ask ourselves, what two things multiply together to give me negative 20, but add to give me the number here that sits in front of the x term, which is also a 1. So the two numbers that come to mind is 5 and 4 multiply to give me 20. But if I have a positive 5 and a negative 4, if I add them, I will get a positive 1. So this will factor into x plus 5, x minus 4 equals 0. So the actual solutions are x equals negative 5 and x equals 4. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that the actual simple trick is you just change the signs here. If you want to get to the answer right away and you don't need the factoring for any reason, um, you can just change these signs and that's your solution. So we end up with x equals negative 5 and x equals 4. So we should just circle these and be done, except for the fact that sometimes we get what's called extraneous solutions, especially with our negative numbers, because negative numbers can cause problems when dealing with square roots. So we want to check to make sure it works. So remember, we had 20 minus x equals x. So if we plug in negative 5, we have 20 minus a minus 5. Does that equal a negative 5? 
Well, we know that a square root can never give us back a negative number. So because of that, we know negative 5 is not going to be a solution to this problem. So that's called an extraneous solution. Now if we plug in 4, we can see that it works. If we have 20 minus 4 equals 4, 20 minus 4 is the square root of 16, and the square root of 16 is equal to 4. So even though we solved and got two answers here, the only one that's a viable solution is x equals 4. All right, let's do one more of these. And this time we will do, um, let's do something that looks complicated here. All right, let's do x equals 5 plus 3x minus 11 to the 1 half. So again, we need to remember that this to the 1 half power is nothing but a square root. So that means that this is actually x equals 5 plus the square root of 3x minus 11. Now, remember when I said if you have an x under a square root and an x not under a square root, that you need to make sure they're on opposite sides of the equation. You also want to take any of the extras that you have, and he's our extra, and move him on the side over here with the plain stuff so that the square root is all by itself on one side, and anything that's not a square root is on the other side. So in order to get this 5 over there, since he's a positive 5, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So that leaves me with x minus 5 on this side equals the square root of 3x minus 11 on this side. And again, the reason we want to do that is so that when we take the square root, that it's nice and simple. Or when we square the square root, it's nice and simple. So the square root is all alone on this side, and any of the other stuff you're going to bring to that side of the equation. All right, now we know we have to get this guy out of that square root. And the only way we can do that is by squaring it. But what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Now over here, note that this is a binomial. Anytime you have a binomial, always have to use parentheses. So that has to be squared as well. This side is easy. That square undoes the square root. And I'm simply left with this 3x minus 11. But what happens over here with this x minus 5 squared? Don't get caught in the trap to think that I can just distribute this 2 and write x squared minus 25. That is not true. You have to, when you see a squared like this, you have to remember that you need to FOIL. So you're going to have to FOIL out this the, uh, this binomial in order to get your answers. If you don't FOIL it, you're going to miss those two middle terms. This is going to be your first term, this is going to be your last term, so that would be part of it, but the two middle terms will get lost if you don't FOIL it. So, we are going to erase this to give us some space here. And we are going to go up top and we're going to write x minus 5 squared equals 3x minus 11. Let's erase this because we're going to need lots of space. And let's FOIL that out. So FOILing, remember, is x minus 5 times x minus 5. First, outers, inners, last. Or as I prefer to just think of it as the double distributive property. So I'm going to take x here and I'm going to multiply them times each of these guys. And then after that, I'm going to take the minus 5 and multiply him by each of those guys. So let's do the x first. The x times x gives me x squared. 
and then the x times minus 5 gives me minus 5x. Now for the minus 5. The minus 5 times the x gives me minus 5x, and the minus 5 times the minus 5 gives me plus 25 equals 3x minus 11. Now we are ready to solve this equation. A lot of steps here. First of all, let's combine all like terms. Notice our x here is positive, and it's a squared. So we know, again, we're dealing with a quadratic, which means our job is to set it equal to 0. And since he's positive, we want everything to be on the left-hand side. So we're going to move this 3x minus 11 over here, combine all of our x's, combine all of our numbers. So let's look at this. We have a minus 5x, a minus 5x, and when we bring this guy over here, we're going to also have a minus 3x because we're bringing him over. So that is a total of minus 5 plus minus 5 plus minus 3 or minus 13x. Now we need to take care of this minus 11. He needs to come over, so we do plus 11. And he will be combined with the plus 25. So he is going to make this a plus 36. And since we took care of everything on that side, we have set it equal to 0, which is what our goal is in order to be able to solve this equation. So now that we have a quadratic, again, our choices are factoring, completing the square, or quadratic formula. So we will try factoring. We are lucky, again, that our leading coefficient here is 1 which means we get to do simple factoring. So we're going to take a 36 over here, and we need to think of two things that multiply together to give me 36, but add together to give me a negative 13. So I think of 9 and 4 will multiply together to give me a 36, but since I want to get a negative 13, I need it to be a negative 9 and a negative 4 because negative 9 plus negative 4 gives me negative 13 and if I multiply two negatives I get a positive. So the solutions, remember you just need to change the signs. So the solutions are positive 9 and positive 4. Now neither of these are negative, so they could both possibly be solutions to the problem, but we still need to check. So our original equation is x equals 5 plus the square root of 3x minus 11. So let's plug them in and check. So we'll plug in 9 first. So if we have 9 equals 5 plus the square root of 9 times 3 is 27 minus 11. 27 minus 11, 27 minus 11 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So this is equal to 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. So 9 is a solution. Now let's check 4. Alright, so we have 4 equals 5 plus the square root. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 11. So that's 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So I get, does 4 equal 5 plus 1? No, it does not. So 4 is not a solution. So the only solution to this problem is 9. So you always need to double check and plug in your solutions because some of them will work and some of them will not work. So there's lots of steps involved in solving these problems, especially the ones that turn into quadratics. So the things we're going to remember is, one, 
that the square roots are going to be by themselves on the left or the right, but by themselves. And on the other side are the non square roots. And then we're going to square both sides. And if the um, right hand side here is a, if you have a binomial like x plus 5 squared, remember that you need to FOIL. And 4, remember that a lot of these will turn into quadratics. And quadratics must be set equal to 0 and then factored or quadratic formula. And then 5, you need to check your solutions. So those are the main things to keep in mind when solving these, especially the more complicated ones. For more practice on these, I recommend uh, the CUTA software. If you Google that, they have um, Algebra 2 worksheets. And there are problems that work on solving uh, radical equations. And they also will give you the solutions so that you can check your work, which is really nice. So thank you for visiting us at Apex Math. If you like our videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to us. And feel free to give us any requests in the comments of future videos that you think would be helpful.